know, I can truly say that I'll never forget my 21st birthday. Some friends and I were, were celebrating in, in the Northern Territory of Australia in a city called Darwin. And just like most people do as they set off to celebrate the, the ripe age of 21, we drank. I mean, we drank a lot. Now, as that lighthearted adventure continued, it would soon turn into a very sobering experience. I started to hear loud whistles blow as I started to recognize American voices say, all military uniforms, report to your units at once. This frightened and confused me. I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. As the whistles got louder, I heard those cries get louder. All military personnel, get back to your units at once. See, my birthday is on September 10th. And that year, the celebration carried over into September 11th, 2001. There I stood in the town of Darwin, and immediately training kicked in. We got back to the USS Peleliu. We waited in line, and that line became a chain of rumors as to what was actually happening. As we made it upstairs and boarded the ship, we went to one of the, the lounge areas and caught the news. But by that point, the world had already changed. Second tower had already been hit. And there we were, the tip of the spear, the Ford deployed unit left to answer the nation's call for 9-11. As the tip of the spear, it was some of my, my good friends that raised the first flag in Afghanistan. But by the time we raised that flag, the terrorist responsible had a two-month head start. We returned to a very different America in that spring of 2002, and it was a year of training and uncertainty before I would find out that my unit would not participate in the Iraqi conflict that began in 2003. That conflict would stand to be one of the longest conflicts that at least my generation had ever seen. To be back in the United States while well, what seemed to be the rest of the military going overseas to engage in conflict was very frustrating for me, especially being an infantry Marine. See, that was my job. And not being able to do that job was very frustrating. To watch all my brothers in arms prepare leave their families and go overseas to do whatever it takes to protect this great nation and to be sitting back here, it was like, it was like riding the bench and watching the Super Bowl. I decided to get out and when I got out in the fall of 2003, I started a new life outside of uniform. When I took that first job, it was very different from the culture of the military. You know, I didn't have a whole lot. I had a little bit of money. I had some great leadership experience. That combined with some advanced weaponry knowledge and tactics, I did what anybody would do, and I drove a ditch witch. <laughs> the first job I have, it was a very, very blue collar job. I worked roustabouting in the oil fields of northeastern Oklahoma, uh, digging ditches, uh, providing energy, if you will. Uh, but for me, it was literally trading hours for money. It was very frustrating because something was missing. After leaving that culture and coming here, something, something was different, and I couldn't quite find out what that was. I slowly started to find it in the next job when I went to work at Thunderbird Youth Academy. See, Thunderbird is a, a youth program, a residential boot camp style atmosphere where some of Oklahoma's at-risk youth can go to find their way. Most of them all high school dropouts, I helped learn mentorship. I helped guide them into being productive members of society. I slowly started to get that passion for life back again. And then six and a half years later, I got a certificate from the state of Oklahoma that said I had personally changed the lives of over 2,000 of America's at-risk youth. That was a very rewarding experience, but there still wasn't enough challenge. I wanted something more. I mean, my goals were big. I wanted to change the world. So after six and a half years, I took the leap into a very different industry 
of that of discipline and drill. And on another benchmark birthday, September 10th, 2010, was my very last day at Thunderbird Youth Academy. September 11th, I leaped into a new industry. I became a wedding DJ. Now, through the time that I've been in this business, over four years now, in fact, I recently celebrated over 300 events and four years in this industry. And as I've traveled all the way to Kansas City, all the way down to Dallas, and everything in between, I've slowly started to recognize a pattern of veterans that are coming back and that are looking for help. That mentor inside of me that I learned from Thunderbird Youth Academy, I've slowly started to find myself mentoring some of these people fostering that transition. As I've become really intentional in trying to find out what this struggle means for them, I've started to ask them one very difficult question. Using only a one-word answer, what do you feel veterans struggle with the most as they return from their, their time in the military into the civilian life? And I've heard some really great answers. I've heard everything from communication, discipline, expectations, even self-medication or suicide. And those, those are all great answers. I can't, I can't deny the impact of any of those one-word answers. Behind every one of them, there is a story. Many of those one-word answers I struggle with myself. But today I'd like to share with you just three. Three that have greatly impacted my transition from discharge to in charge, and three that may bring value to your life. See, the first one I found in that very first job, I went from being a United States Marine, a hero in some sense, to digging ditches. What a transition. It was only whenever I got that job at the Youth Academy that I realized purpose. Purpose is the first thing that all of us embody the day that we swear in and promise to protect this great nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic. But see, that first job for me, purpose is the first thing that went away. Now, I can look back and say, yes, I was providing energy. But after that transition, I saw no purpose. The only thing I saw was the next mile in front of me. The second one is one that we all seek and that's simply culture. We look for it in our daily lives. We look for it in our, in our business. We all want a place where our family can be safe and share the same ideas that we have. So those same ideas can grow on from one generation to the next. But see, the culture of the military is so very different. And before you realize the culture that you have, I'd like to share with you a very different culture in which we all come from, a culture where we, in some cases, leave for a very long time, and we're forced to go to a place where communication isn't easy, not only with our loved ones back home, but with the people that we're trying to help. See, the culture of the military is very different. In my experience as a US Marine, I, I got the, the privilege to walk an incredible path. See, the culture of the Marine Corps is branded for excellence. We teach leadership as a fundamental. As I came back and as I've slowly started to spend more time in this industry, I see more and more businesses every single day that are trying to develop their culture. And there's some great examples out there. There's some companies that hire and fire based on their, their core values to protect their culture. Our culture was to protect all of you. That's a tremendous responsibility, but as we come back, slowly veterans are finding that the culture in the corporate workplace is very different from that in the military. See, in the military, we're willing to sacrifice everything to protect the people around us, where in the corporate world, in some cases, we're willing to sacrifice everybody else for that next promotion. This is very different from the culture that we're used to, and for that, 
so many people struggle. But there is a ray of hope, and the very last one is one that has very, stood very true in my experience, and that is leadership. I was, really, I was really taken back for a second when I saw leadership, because at first I thought, how do veterans, how do so many veterans struggle with leadership? I feel like that's the one thing that we possess as we return. But in this industry and in this culture, leadership is often confused with management. See, management is very different from leadership. After all, there's never been a book written, there's never been a movie made about a hero that was managed into battle. <laughs> Heroes are always led. So for this very reason, leadership is something that we struggle with. But I want you to think for just a moment about some of the most powerful organizations in the world. Let's take the example of Google. I mean, after all, they got their own word in a dictionary. That's pretty powerful stuff. But if you were to take all the coding and all the servers away from Google, it would just be a bunch of people. If you took something like Apple that's very innovative and you took away all their devices and you took away all their technologies, it's just a bunch of people. Take all of the military veterans and as you transition them out and you take away their weapons, you take away their tanks, you take away their uniform, all you have is people. But I guarantee you, if you challenge any people from those three organizations to develop new resources, to develop new innovative ideas, to develop new companies, you're going to see some of the world's best leaders emerge. And together, they will create some of the most powerful organization that this planet has ever seen. Leadership is something that we can bring back. And friends, we're about to go through one of the largest tipping points that this nation has ever seen. Over the next few years, more than a million veterans will be returning home to join more than a million veterans that have already served. In Start With Why, Simon Sinek suggests if tipping points exist, then we should be able to design them. Well, to everybody out there that has an organization and to all the veterans out there, my challenge is to take that design and instead of asking what we have done, Imagine what we can do. Because after all, if veterans have been willing to risk everything, everything, to bring peace to corners of the world where it's never existed, just imagine the leadership that they can bring to your corner of the world. Imagine the leadership they can bring to your community. Imagine the leadership they can bring to your organization. Thank you so much.